These days, we are used to the idea of so many heroes in folklore, film, and television, and even plays. However, in medieval England, there were no heroes. This was a time of great hardship, so therefore, the idea of Robin Hood perhaps came from the need of the peasantry of England to think that there is someone out there who could save them. Robin Hood is the first outlaw, the first lovable rogue that has had stories told about him throughout the ages. Many believe that the story of Robin Hood originated from poems that were written 700 years ago. And in fact, there never was such a man. Just the stories that came from poetry and from sonnets. But now, we are so used to the story of Robin Hood in films, books, and television that we almost accept it as a part of history, that there actually was such a man. There may have been such a man, but at this point in time, we simply have no proof either way. Have his stories survived throughout the generations because they are good stories that people enjoy? Or have they survived because they are based on a real character from history? When you look at the story of Robin Hood, what you see is the classic idea of David and Goliath. The idea that one man stands up against a gigantic force which others would simply crumble under the weight of has always been appealing. Even today, we love the story of the underdog. We love the story of the man who stands up for what is right. The reason so many of us like the story of the underdog is because most of us at some point in time have felt victimized by a larger person, a larger organization, or even our own government. It is for this reason that people enjoy such a story about a man who stands up against suppression. Because inside of us, there's always a little part of us which would like us to do this. However, we rarely do because we are concerned about the consequences. We are concerned about the long-term effects that it would have on our life. So believing in this character who throws caution to the wind allows us respite from the confines of our own life. Robin Hood essentially became a hero inside of people's minds. Robin Hood was classed as an outlaw which essentially means he was a villain. He stole, which is an immoral thing to do. However, because he stole from the rich, in our minds, that is considered fair enough because they were people who had plenty. And when you look back at the time in which Robin Hood was supposed to have been around, it would have definitely had some moral justification because the peasantry of England were so poor that to steal from the rich and distribute it to the poor would have, in a Christian sense, been completely and utterly justifiable. 
Like many stories and many characters, the Robin Hood which was presented to the world 700 years ago was very different to the Robin Hood and the story around him which we accept as being truth today. But although the story of Robin Hood has changed throughout the centuries, there are some basic elements which have remained the same. Those elements are that Robin Hood is a good man who has been outlawed through no fault of his own. That he has escaped the clutches of authority and has gone to live in a forest where he has met up with his friends who are labelled the Merry Men. There is romance in the form of the character Maid Marian. And of course there are his enemies, the Sheriff of Nottingham and also the evil King John. When you look at the tales of Robin Hood, it becomes obvious that he is the main character in these stories. Although this is a story about a bunch of outlaws, it is obvious that the entire story revolves around him. However, the characters in which he shares his deeds also affect him and inform his character. When we look at the character structure of Robin Hood, what we see is the essential makeup of a modern film or story. You have the main character, Robin Hood. He has a romantic interest in Maid Marian, so that the story appeals not only to men. And around him are a variety of supporting characters who in themselves inform the character because it allows his archetypal personality to bounce off different personalities and through this conversations and stories can evolve. The story of Robin Hood could simply be fiction. However, the story is completely connected to historical fact. And it is for this reason that many think that the story of Robin Hood was based on a real man. Going back to the apparent time of Robin Hood, around 700 years ago, Times in medieval England were, in fact, incredibly difficult. This was not just the case in Britain, but was the case all the way across Europe. The peasantry were simply trying to survive. The story of Robin Hood takes place in the late Middle Ages. This was a period between the 11th and the 15th centuries that lasted for around 500 years. This was a time long after the glory of the Roman Empire. This was a time in which Europe had become fragmented into small kingdoms. And it was a time in which there were lords and kings at the top who were surrounded by the mass of poor and illiterate peasants. Many peasants did not even have land to farm, and those who did were subject to the lords who rented the land to them. The lords could decide the taxes, and in essence, therefore decided how much the peasants had to eat. Some of these feudal barons were cruel and greedy men who took everything they could from their peasantry, who were 
worked the land so hard. Some of these feudal barons literally left their subjects on the edge of starvation. Peasants working the farms without food in their stomachs. It was a harsh time indeed. It was, in a sense, like a form of slavery. These feudal lords could request just about anything from the peasantry, and if they dared refuse, they would be thrown off their land, which would mean that they would have nowhere to go, and they and their family would starve. It is also worth noting that this was a time of hardship through lack of medicine. If a peasant felt ill, he would have no way to cure himself because there were no doctors around and those who claimed to have medical knowledge often were frauds. So if a peasant felt incredibly ill or was perhaps terminally ill, they would still be expected to farm their land because the simple fact of the matter is the feudal lord would still be expecting his taxes. So many of the peasants died from disease, not ever knowing what it actually was. 35 was a grand age to get to in those days. And if you made it to 45, you were considered to be elderly. Life expectancy in terms of quality and longevity was very low indeed. It was a hard life for the people. Historians and agriculturalists have worked out that for a peasant family to survive without malnutrition, they would need around 12 acres of land. However, looking at historical accounts, it seems that very few peasants had this amount of land, with the vast majority of them only being able to farm around four to five acres. This means that they were always in an equilibrium of hunger as they struggled to farm their land with the malnutrition and the health effects which are caused by such a condition. This was a time in which people actually died of starvation. Some could get help from family. However, there were those who had no family they would literally find themselves starving to death. Without land, you were simply left to wander the world looking for food. Most would head to the woods, knowing that there was a larger abundance of wildlife there. It was not unusual to see dead bodies in the woods. Folk who had gone there looking for food but who had failed and had therefore sat down to rest and simply passed away. This today would seem extraordinary. However, in those days, it was simply a common sight. One thing that is of pivotal importance in the background and the time of Robin Hood is that at the time of these stories, Britain was an occupied country. It had been taken over by the French-speaking Normans. This somewhat changes the story of Robin Hood because it means that the story of Robin Hood almost takes on that of guerrilla warfare against an alien occupying force. 
It almost gives his desire to find food and feed the poor more gravity and weight because he is fighting against a force which has no legitimacy in England. He is helping to rid England of suppression. The Normans came over to England, led by the legendary William the Conqueror in 1066. They took control of England by beating the last Saxon king, King Harold II. As a legend would have it, the Norman laws were extremely suppressive, and this put the English people in the grip hold of a situation which left them malnutritioned and also very poor. One of the worst laws that the Normans put into place was the Forest Law, which stated that peasants were no longer allowed to hunt for food in the forests. This would be retained simply for the pleasure of the king and those who were close to him. However, so many peasants needed to hunt in the forests and the woods simply to survive because either their land did not provide them with all the food they needed, or in fact, they had no land at all. Suddenly, something that they did on a daily basis to help them and their family survive became an illegal activity and was known as poaching. But why is this all so important? Well, to have a hero is one thing. But when that hero comes on the back of a social situation which is completely unfair and leaves the average man in a very poor position, this elevates the hero in importance because his cause has become all the more magnificent in its necessity. It is against this backdrop of the Normans, making it illegal to hunt in the forests and woods of England, that Robin Hood came to live in the forests and defy the law of those evil Norman kings. Peasants being arrested for simply trying to survive would obviously have loved a story about a man who stood up against their suppressors. It would have given them hope. It would have made them felt empowered that possibly they could do the same and survive in this terrible and harsh world. The Norman rulers put foresters in place to watch the forests of the land and to arrest those who went out poaching. It has been said that some were even hung for poaching the king's game, whereas others were simply blinded or had their fingers chopped off. These, or at least the vast majority of these people who were arrested, were not criminals as such. They were not stealing to enrich themselves. They were simply hunting to survive. And it is on the backdrop of this unfairness that Robin Hood's story came to prevalence. These people had no choice. If they did not have enough land to survive, they simply had to choose between going against the laws of the land or simply allowing themselves to starve to death. It is worth noting, however, that in those days it was incredibly difficult to catch someone who had been identified as an outlaw or a criminal. 
because people could just move around and there was so little communication across the country. By moving around, peasants could move from place to place and even give themselves new names. If they had been outlawed with a particular name, they could present themselves to another village with a different one and start a whole new life. It is possible that they could be found out. However, if you traveled from one end of the country to another, it would have been very difficult for the authorities to have kept track of you. When we watch the movies and TV series of Robin Hood that have been made in the past, it is always projected that the life that they had was one of good grace and pure enjoyment. They probably did to some extent. However, there would have been times of starvation and there would have been times of extreme weather. Living in the woods was not an easy life. Though they were free of their feudal barons and free of the suppression in which they were forced under, they now had to struggle to survive and unlike crops which grow gradually, which means you can monitor the food that you have, catching game was a lot more erratic. You could find yourself with plenty one week, and the next week you could find yourself starving to death. Skin care and disease would have been a massive issue. Of course, those who were dwelling in the forests could have bathed themselves in streams and rivers. However, the problem with this is that in summer, this would have been acceptable. However, in winter, when the lakes have frozen over and the water is so cold, that just dipping yourself into it would have given a risk of hypothermia. This would have left these forest dwelling people in a situation where it was impossible for them to clean themselves. As such, lice and other skin conditions were rampant within that time. This was a time in which Many dangers faced people, and if they were left to dwell in the woods, they had little protection because they had little resources to fight such conditions off. So who is the main enemy of a Robin Hood? I think anybody who is slightly familiar with the story of Robin Hood knows that it is the Sheriff of Nottingham. But was he really such a bad man as the stories would have us believe? The Sheriff of Nottingham was really just a guy doing his job. And you could argue what sort of man would do such a job? What sort of man would stop starving people from trying to feed themselves. Well, it is worth noting that he himself was stuck in this harsh world and having found an opportunity to feed him and his family, you can hardly blame him for wanting to take such a job and make sure that his children survived. We all care about others, or at least most of us do. However, all of us care about ourselves and our family first. And in this harsh world, if you were given the opportunity to take up a job which would provide plenty for your family, you would simply have to take it.
because you never know when you might find yourself on the edge of starvation. His was a job of difficult equilibrium. He was charged by the king with keeping law and order in his county. But he was also charged with also stopping revolts. The harsher the laws, the more people had to break those laws just to survive. So, if he did not carry out the king's laws, he would find himself taken from his position, which would mean that he and his family could end up starving. However, if he enforced those laws too harshly, then they would be revolution and massive law-breaking, which, if the king found out, could also lead him to losing his position. In the king's eyes, a good sheriff was a sheriff that completely and absolutely enforced his laws, whilst also stopping any kind of revolt against the king himself. This was a double-edged sword and required a level of balance which was difficult to attain. In many of the TV shows and films about Robin Hood, the Sheriff of Nottingham was a man who was constantly trying to hunt down and persecute Robin Hood's people. However, the likelihood of it would have been that it would not have been him who was actually carrying this out. His was a position of high importance. He would have had men doing this for him. And in fact, it would have been very unlikely that he would have actually come into physical contact with Robin Hood himself. The sheriff worked for King John who is known in history to be a man of great tyranny. By all accounts, King John was excommunicated by the Pope. It is said that he murdered his nephew to take the throne, and that his life involved murder, adultery, and incest. Even the barons and lords of the land disliked King John, even though they were profiting and leading a good life due to their closeness to him. But despite this, in the year 1215, they all got together and forced him to sign the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta otherwise known as the Great Charter, was the beginning of the end of arbitrary royal rule in Great Britain. Historians say that between the years 1199 and 1215, during the reign of King John, the cost and therefore the taxes of running the royal system nearly tripled. And it is off the back of this that the Magna Carta came into existence because the pressure that he was putting on his feudal lords and therefore the pressure that they were putting on the peasants was causing revolution and the country was getting close to boiling point. It was therefore essential that the lords stepped in and curtailed his power. What is interesting is that with the Magna Carta being signed in 1215, the first ever mention of Robin Hood in literature is in 1225. So this shows that these two events the event of the first appearance of Robin Hood and the signing of the Magna Carta, which reduced the powers of King John, were around the same time, and that perhaps 
both were products of the tyranny of this evil king. Most historians agree that the Magna Carta was essentially the first bill of human rights. This is the document that says that a king has limited powers and he cannot just kill people for the sake of killing people. It is this that is the basis and foundation of all modern democracies. Some have even suggested that it is characters like Robin Hood revolting against the Lords and therefore putting pressure on the Lords to put pressure on the King that led to the Magna Carta and therefore the foundation of democracy itself. If this were true, then that would make the importance of Robin Hood even stronger. It would make him a forefather of a modern democracy, rather than just a man who stole to feed himself, his family, and his friends. The Magna Carta was, in a sense, a primitive form of constitution. So as the story has it, Robin Hood lived in Sherwood Forest with his band of merry men. At this point in time, there was no paper money and obviously no bank credit system. So if money had to be transferred from one place to another, it had to go on a very long road journey. And much of these roads went through the woods and forests of England. At this time in history, the road that connected the south of England to the north of England was called the Great North Road. And this road passed through the middle of Sherwood Forest. Woods and forests were particularly daunting places for traveling people to pass through because the trees provided cover for thieves and murderers. If you were traveling along a road in the wide open, you would have time to see thieves and murderers coming towards you. However, in the depth of Sherwood Forest, you would have little to no notice. You would suddenly find yourself ambushed and there would be nobody there to help. Thieves could take what they want and then simply disappear into the forest. In those days, if you were transporting money, gold or merchandise from one place to another, it was a very scary task. As such, those who were transporting such things came along the journey heavily armed and tried to have as many people with them as possible so that if an ambush were to take place, you would have a chance of being able to escape. Also, by increasing numbers and weaponry, and having this weaponry on display, the idea would be that it would put off any want-to-be thieves from trying to take your merchandise. The idea would be that the thieves watching in the woods would decide to pick on somebody else that day because you represented a significant risk to them. The forests of England were also a very good place to hide the evidence of a crime. If outlaws killed some people while they were traveling along the Great North Road, those bodies could easily be dragged off the road and hidden deep within the forest. In such a place of great cover and foliage, 
it was much less likely that they would be any witnesses. And therefore, getting away with such a crime was much easier than it was in open space. Looking back at many of the ballads that were written about Robin Hood, it seems that the original Robin Hood was more like a simple thief. It was really just the story of an outlaw, a man that did not play by the rules. However, over time this has evolved into a man who still thieves, but only from the rich, and then often gives to the poor. He was transformed from a criminal, a villain, into a hero. This made him seem like a man of nobility, a man to be looked up to, a man to be respected. This transformation from a simple thief into a thief who provides food for the poor and starving obviously made him a more popular character. No longer was he a selfish man who broke the law, he was now a man who risked his own life to save other people. In that he becomes an almost Christ-like figure. A man who puts his own life in danger to save others. He was, in effect, breaking the law in order to bring England back to a sense of justice. It is important to separate out law and justice. The law often provides justice, but in those days of tyranny, the law was not necessarily a thing that actually carried out justice at all. Often the law was simply in place to help subjugate the poor, the people who had no power of their own. So to have a man who stands up for those people and delivers them some justice, even if it is just providing them with the basic requirements of life, then this is a powerful story that obviously those who were desperate at the time would have loved to have heard. The story of Robin Hood has lasted for centuries. But going back to when the story first came into existence, it is worth noting that the absolute vast majority of peasants in England could not read or write. It was therefore in the form of the musical ballad that the story of Robin Hood was spread throughout the land and became so popular. It is also worth noting that in this time there was very little in the way of entertainment. There were no cinemas or bowling alleys or playstations or internet. People would entertain themselves through stories. And those who could tell a story with the background of music would be the most compelling of them all. As we know, music allows us to be transported to another state of emotional thoughts. So these stories of Robin Hood were relayed with the music of the time, probably in alehouses or possibly sat round old campfires. Such stories gave the people of the time an escapism from the misery of their lives and therefore were very popular indeed. Tie into that the fact that these people would have thought that their lives were miserable because of the suppression of the king and the sheriff. To then have a story of a man who stood up to both and helped the common people would have been not only entertaining, 
but would have been somewhat inspirational and liberating. The story of Robin Hood has evolved over the centuries. At first he was a rough man, a man who would murder and steal. He then became a man who would steal and give to the poor. However, as society changed and became more civilized, so did Robin Hood. He was no longer as gruesome as he had been. He no longer chopped off the heads of those who he robbed. And he began to evolve into a noble man. And it is in this that his story changed from simply being an outlaw to instead being a man who came back from the Crusades, fighting for his king to find the king's kingdom in tatters. And therefore, he decided to step up and restore some kind of justification to the world that England had become. It is also around this time that the concept of Maid Marian was born. Originally, he did not have a wife or girlfriend, but the story evolved to encompass a love interest so that the story of Robin Hood would have a wider appeal. It was already incredibly popular amongst men, as the stories of violence and daring would always appeal to males. But now, with a love interest involved in the story, suddenly women had a part of the story that would interest them a lot more. Suddenly, he was not just a daring outlaw. He was now a man of great heart and love. It is a typical and cliché formulation of writing a story in Hollywood movies. The concept of introducing a love interest. And this is exactly what happened to the story of Robin Hood. But it was not just Robin Hood who evolved over the centuries. So too did Maid Marian. At one point, she was just a simple woman who followed him round and did as he said. But then her story began to evolve. She became a huntress and became a formidable woman in her own right. This is the nature of storytelling. It always evolves and that evolution is always dictated by what the audience wants to hear. So Robin Hood changed from a man who was completely and utterly opposed to his king, to a man who actually was incredibly loyal to his king in supporting Richard the Lionheart in the Crusades. And that, in fact, it was when he returned from the Crusades, the king's brother, John, had taken all of Robin Hood's land and was also trying to steal the kingdom of Britain for himself. So, in fact, Robin Hood was fighting for himself to restore his own lands, but he was also loyally fighting for his king to keep the kingdom of Britain for Richard the Lionheart for when he returned from the Crusades. This change from pure outlaw to a man who is, in a sense, a loyalist was quite the change, which was why it required his loyalty to go to a different king. It became the story of the good king and the bad king. This story change happened around the 16th century, and many people suggest it was a byproduct of the British Empire. The idea being that the outlaw was now out of favor in popular culture 
as this was a time in which British people were supposed to serve the flag and serve the empire. So in order to make Robin Hood acceptable within that society, and perhaps even possibly to some extent used as propaganda, he was turned into a loyalist supporter of the incredibly brave Richard the Lionheart, and therefore fought King John and the Sheriff of Nottingham in order to restore the good king's legacy and his kingdom. This change also changed Robin Hood from being a man who was noble through his actions to a man who was actually a born of nobility. It is interesting that this story changed in such a way. But if Robin Hood was being used as British Empire propaganda, then it would make sense that the British Empire would want people to look up to a character who was of a high position, as they would want the citizens of Britain to do the same, as this would obviously encourage law and order. An outlaw can be a dangerous thing in terms of law and order, as it can inspire others to take up arms against the law. So by switching the story into a story of a man who was actually serving the one true king, and in that he was fighting against the bad king, suddenly Robin Hood, although technically an outlaw, was actually fighting on the side of the true law as he fought for the true king. But with all this story and fantasy, one has to ask the question, was there actually a man called Robin Hood who did these things? Some would say no. However, many historians believe adamantly that there was a man that these stories were based upon. There was a man in history called Robert of Weatherby, which many historians think the story of Robin Hood was based upon. The story of Robert of Weatherby has some very stark similarities. He had his goods and land confiscated of him by a man who was at one point in time the Sheriff of Nottingham. This has all been recorded on historical documents and has been confirmed by historians. The question is whether or not historians can come to the conclusion that this is enough evidence to accept the idea that this is the man on which the stories of Robin Hood are based. Robert of Weatherby was chased by a posse of men led by the Sheriff of Yorkshire. Some historians suggest that the story of Robin Hood was based on a man with a completely different name, a man by the name of Folk Fitzwarren. Folk Fitzwarren was a man who was actually brought up with King John in the same household, the household of Henry II, who was John's father. As legend would have it, the two boys were playing chess together. John, having lost, tipped over the chess table. So therefore, Falk punched him on the cheek. This created a hating between the two men, which carried on into adulthood. And many believe that this was the basis of the story of Robin Hood. Some historians even suggest that the story goes way back before even the Roman Empire, and that this is just a common story 
throughout the world. But it was in England where the story really caught fire and became popular. And therefore it is the British version that has been maintained throughout the centuries and become almost the stuff of legend. Although Robin Hood is the most famous of all the outlaws, there are many others around the world who are very famous indeed, such as Che Guevara. He too was a man who stood up against the authorities with a strong sense of idealism that he felt things had to change. These stories ring out throughout the centuries, but for some reason it is Robin Hood who has been labelled as the original and the most famous. There have been many famous outlaws across history. To mention a few would be William Tell of Switzerland, Billy the Kid of the United States, and Salvatore Giuliano of Sicily. Yet for some reason, Robin Hood remains the most famous of all of them. This is probably because he was the first, and the fact that his story has lasted for so long means that many people believe he was a true man from myth and history. But no matter what you believe, and no matter what you do not want to believe, there is no doubt that the story of Robin Hood is compelling now just as much as it was back then. There was a time when the story of Robin Hood could have died out. If people had stopped singing the ballads about his life, we would not know who Robin Hood is today. But the fact that he has made it this far and now has been featured in countless television programs and countless cinema films means that his legacy has been recorded. As such, more stories will be told about him over the next few centuries and will continue to evolve as is needed in society as society evolves itself. But no matter what you believe, there is no doubt that his legacy is now cemented in the folklore of planet Earth.